Hey guys, how's it going? This is Mike with Jet Set Simmer. I'm looking a little bit like Charlie Brown today, so uh, hopefully you don't mind. However, today I have another speed build for you, so why don't we jump into it, all right? So for today's speed build, I decided I wanted to try to do another modern build. It's not often that I do modern style builds just because I feel like it's not really something I'm good at doing. But for some reason, I just wanted to switch it up and I thought, you know what? A modern style build would be so much fun, so why don't we do it? So that's pretty much what I'm trying to do today. And uh, I feel like with most modern style builds, they're just very boxy and blocky. And that's pretty easy. And, and usually not many of them have roofs. And so you just kind of can use platforms and stuff. So that's pretty much what I focus doing in this build. I think I accomplished it. I do actually like this modern house by the end of it. And I want to play in it now. I did post pictures of my works in progress on Twitter and people were saying that they thought it looked really good, which is, you know, it's really encouraging to me because I don't usually build modern builds, like I said. So it was definitely fun to venture out and do this type of modern build. One of the things that I wanted to do with this build especially was just kind of to have like the windows more inset on this front section of the house. I don't know if you could see, but like I tried to make it feel like the windows were set in a little bit and then there were like little planter boxes or shelving type things and then like a concrete thing that sticks out. It's so hard to explain, but hopefully you're seeing what I mean as you watch this little speed build video. Other than that, guys, what's up? What's new? It has been so nice here in Chicago lately. Like my boyfriend and I actually went to a coffee shop this morning for the first time in a long while and we actually sat inside. It was so nice. It's just really exciting to see things opening up and to be able to go do things again. And so, it was just super nice. I posted pictures on my Twitter and if you wanna see, we went to this really cute place here in Chicago and it is the only location in the US that you could go to this coffee shop because all the other coffee shops of I guess this chain coffee shop is all in Amsterdam. So it was super cute. Also, I wanna mention, I actually use the tool mod a little bit in this build. I have never used the tool mod before ever, but I decided that I needed to go through and update some of my mods. And one of the mods is Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod, which I love because it definitely organizes your debug so much better. Usually when you use debug items, you have to type in the search bar debug and then click on it and then like scroll through so many debug items to find what you're looking for. However, with Twisted Mexi's mod, I think it's called the Better Build By mod. It's all organized and tags are added to the object so you can literally type in like ivy and all the debug ivy plants will also pop up in the menu. It's super nice. However, with the latest update, it kind of merged Better Build By with the tool mod that Twisted Mexi also puts out. And if you don't know what the tool mod is, basically it is a mod that allows you to change the size and the like location of objects. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you wanted to like rotate an object that stands upright to lay down flat, you can use the mod and rotate it and actually kind of build custom content without having to actually use custom content, if that makes any sense. If you haven't checked out Twisted Mexi's mods, I definitely recommend that you do. I'll put a link in the description box below. However, this was my very first time ever playing around with the tool mod, and so I actually cut out a big portion of this video um, where I was just kind of playing around with it, but didn't actually use it in the build. Um, however, I did use it a few times. And one of the times I did use it is for that ferny plant that is a debug plant. I've used it in so many other videos and speed builds that I've done. And it's that plant that when you place it, it's just kind of floating slightly above the ground. And so when you go down into like, you know, a perspective of a sim, you could tell that it's floating off the ground. So I actually use the tool mod to lower that object to the ground and it looks so much better. And so I use the tool mod for that. I also use the tool mod for the pillars that I used because they were sticking out further than the wall upstairs, kind of. And so I use the tool mod to just kind of bring it in and it 
just looks so much better in my opinion. However, that's really the only way that I use the tool mod in this build, and I'm definitely interested to play around with it more because I know a lot of really cool builders in The Sims use the tool mod and they create like incredible things, but it's a little confusing when you first download tool mod. And so I wanna watch a couple YouTube tutorials and really try to learn and um, figure out how to use that mod so that way I can enhance my building skills. However, back to the build, this house is a little small, so I don't even remember how many bedrooms I fit into it. I think there's only two bedrooms, as is with most of the builds that I end up doing. Um, but I tried to keep it very modern and minimalistic. I tried to use a lot of wood, cream, and beige tones just because, I don't know, I'm on a beige fix still. I'm still on the beige fix. And anyway, a little life update for you. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw me tweet a couple days ago about kind of like the situation that I'm in with some medical bills. Um, if you did not know, I actually had surgery on my left ear twice within the past year. I had a surgery last September and then I just had my second surgery in February. I've always had issues with both my ears ever since birth. I've had plenty of tubes in my ears. I've had my eardrum on my left side rupture like three times in my life. I've had a lot of ear infections and yeast infections in my ear. Um, and for the majority of my life, I was pretty much partially deaf in my left ear and I've just had so many issues with it, so many surgeries and whatnot. And about a year ago, I was having a lot of issues where I was losing my hearing completely in my left ear and it just always sounded like I was underwater and it was causing a lot of pain and really weird smells. Sorry for the TMI, but like it was, it was funky. Also, my ear was bleeding a lot as well, so it was kind of alarming. So I went back to see a specialist. However, I had not seen a specialist since I moved to Chicago, so I had to go through the process of finding a new specialist and you know, updating them and finding all of my past records to give to them. And it was just a process, right? And essentially the doctor found a growing cyst on my eardrum in my left ear, and it was causing a majority of my hearing problems and infections and just like creating a lot of issues in my ear essentially. And so I had to have a surgery to remove the cyst from my eardrum in September. And it went successfully, it was all great. And at the time I was technically still employed because I had the surgery in September and I was furloughed in October. So I still had my insurance covering all of it and everything was perfect, right? And then after the surgery, I did some follow up appointments and they essentially found that there was still some residual um, bacteria and stuff on my eardrum from the cyst and parts of the cyst, I guess, that were still there. I also had cholesteatoma, which is the medical term for it, on my eardrum. And I, I don't truly even still understand what exactly that is, but it's some sort of growth that helps a cyst pr be produced on your eardrum. And so I still had some residual leftovers of the cholesteatoma on my eardrum. And sorry for the TMI, but essentially I had to have a second surgery to remove the remaining of it. And I had that surgery done in February, which if you've seen a couple of my videos, I had like this funky, like huge ear, ear patch on my ear in some of those videos. However, it healed quite nicely and I haven't had any issues. My hearing test results have improved significantly, which is amazing because I've been partially deaf in my left ear for, I mean, probably over five years now. And now I can hear again in my left ear. It's a world of a difference. However, a few days ago, I received a letter in the mail from the insurance company and they denied the claim of my surgery. So they decided that this surgery seemed like it was an experimental or cosmetic surgery and they were not going to cover it. So I would need to foot the bill of the $26,000 surgery. In the letter, it does explain that I would only have to pay about $13,000 for it, but still. So I kind of freaked out because it was weird. They covered my first surgery completely, which was the exact surgery that I had done in February, except the difference in February was is 
A part of removing the remaining cholesteatoma, they also inflated my eustachian tube in my ear. And apparently, I guess when they build the insurance company, they did not add the notes in on the bill or something saying that it was a necessary surgery. So the insurance company looked at that and they said, well, that obviously was a cosmetic or investigative or like experimental surgery that you had to have done and you didn't actually have to have it done. So because of that, we're not gonna cover it. However, the thing is, is I was not given the choice to have that surgery. The doctor was like, no, we have to do that because you are a flight attendant, your ear goes through pressure changes three to six times a day, and I wanna remove any possibility of your ear forming this cholesteatoma again and getting infected again and creating a cyst on your eardrum again. And so I didn't really have an option for these surgeries. It was not an experiment. It was <laughs> very much needed. And since the second surgery, even my hearing has improved tremendously. And so obviously it was not like something I just decided one day, oh, I think I'm gonna go get my eustachian tube enlarged and I'm going to go have my ear fixed. Like, no, it was necessary because it was causing major life impairments, you know, and hearing impairments. So I did post on Twitter about it and a few people actually responded with really great information that I had no idea about. And so if you're interested in reading some of that information, find me on Twitter. My username is Jet Set Simmer. Some people definitely posted some great resources that essentially explained that if your insurance denies you, then there are ways that you could get a lot of your bills pretty much forgiven by the hospitals because most hospitals are non-for-profit. However, I'm glad because I called the doctor's office this morning and the billing department was like, hey, we are way ahead of you because we saw that it got denied. So we are actually redoing your claim and we are gonna do the appeal on your behalf. So you shouldn't have to stress about it. Don't stress about it unless you get a bill directly from our office. And so it definitely made me feel a lot better and more calm. And honestly, I'm just so thankful that I'm visiting this doctor's office here in Chicago. If you live in Chicago, you might be familiar with them. They are called Rush. They're the like Rush University. And I have never had as great of an experience going anywhere else other than Rush. Like Rush has just been so incredible compared to all the places I used to go to growing up. They are on it, they are on the ball, they are just very communicative. Everything is just so easy. They do the best they can to remove stress from you being the patient. And honestly, like it was such a relieving phone call to have this morning where they were telling me, do not stress because we are gonna take care of this. And it made me feel so much better and just so thankful that I am a patient at Rush Medical because in the past, other places I've been to, they have not been as accommodating and helpful. So I will say, if you live in the Chicago area, go to Rush because they are incredible. Anyway, that's a little life update. I feel like I've sucked up a lot of time in this little speed build talking about this, but um, I think we are nearing the end of the speed build. And so I'm just going to jump into game and I'll give you a little bit of a tour and we'll talk about this really cool modern house I decided to build. All right, guys, here we are. And right as I open up, my sim is jumping into the pool. So I'll just show you, oh, I pressed M. Of course, I press M every single time I do one of these little tours, it seems. However, I'll show you the backyard since we're here right now. Here is the lovely backyard and I love it. I put like this little porch in the backyard with the grill and some seating. You've got the string lights back here. Um, there's a lot of plants. And then I put like these little couches and outdoor furniture out here with the pool. Everything is this black, white, and beige kind of color scheme and I love it. I think it just looks super cute, super homey. I love how the home just naturally has this thick awning right here. I feel like that is a very good indicator that you are living in a modern home. And the pillars, everything, the lights, it just looks super cute. However, here is the front of the house and I honestly just really love the front of this house. Why don't we jump into build mode so I can show you different lighting because this is honestly my favorite time of day to show you the house, the little sunset. This is what I was saying earlier, the windows are kind of set in further and the concrete part kind of sticks out further. I just think it looks super cute. I put little like 
um, lights up above these areas and at night they shine. I think it looks super awesome. I'll come down into first person mode. I love the front door area. I don't remember what pack this door comes in, but I feel like it fits so perfectly. Most modern homes, I feel like the gardens are a little more manicured, kind of like this. But for some reason in front of these windows, I just went with this overgrown look. So hopefully you don't mind that. So when you walk directly into the house, you walk in and there's this little like seating area in the entryway. You look directly at the little dining room with the back doors to the back patio. When you look this way, you have a staircase that has no railing. So it's pretty dangerous, but you know what? I think it kind of fits with this modern vibe. I tried to go with all of these very earth tones in this house because I think this looks just good and I'm kind of on a beige fix like I've said. This light, I love this light. I think it's so modern and these paintings on the wall, I don't know. I just feel like it looks super cute and modern. I use a lot of items from the new Snowy Escape Pack just because it looks super modern to me, it fits right in. I put a little chess table here so you can uh, build up your logic. And I'll also show you this perspective of the little entryway with the landing and then the dining room. I love the light above the dining room as well. This is super modern. I enlarged this picture of the waterfall because it reminds me of Yosemite and I love Yosemite. I used to live near Yosemite in California. And then when you walk through here, you come into the kitchen and I love this kitchen. I I think I love the light fixtures above the island and all the big windows. I decided not to do cabinets in this kitchen because I feel like most modern homes have these shelves with a lot of things up on the shelves. So I put some items up there, some debug items here and there, and uh, it's just super cute. Oh, that is not supposed to be there. This like outdoor potted plant, so that's a mistake. Also over here, there's a little door that you could easily miss, but it goes into a little tiny downstairs half bathroom and it's all very black and concrete. It's very cute. And like I've already shown you, here is the outdoor backyard patio area. I'll just show you in first person, super cute. Now we'll head upstairs. There is the stairs again, and this is up at the top of the landing. I put a little easel up here and then Here's a little seating area in this little corner just because I didn't really know what else to put in here. I'll show you this room first directly right here. You've got like a little office music studio type of room. So I put the keyboard piano with, you know, your computer desk and your computer. And then right here, I put a Murphy bed. And so the bed comes down. If you want to have this be like an extra bedroom, you've got the TV there, some bookshelves. It's just kind of really cute little extra bedroom. Then directly through this door is the main bedroom of the house. And so I went with this very dark color scheme. So a lot of woods, browns and blacks, especially. I think it's super cute, super modern feeling to me at least. I put the sconces next to uh, the bed on either side on the wall. I feel like that's a modern touch. And then the bathroom. This is actually the first time I've actually done a bathroom that looks decent. I'm not one to really spend time building bathrooms, so a lot of my bathrooms look very generic, but this bathroom, I wanted to get that modern feel, and I feel like I really succeeded. So we got like the marble shower here, you got the tub and the window, you've got like the modern bassinet with sink and the mirror. However, that's essentially a tour of this modern home, very quick, very simple. Very sweet. I love the garden area. I love the backyard. I usually don't spend time making really nice backyards, but this backyard, for some reason, I was like, no, I gotta make a really cool modern backyard. And so that's kind of what I did. And I wanted like this large grassy area in the front when I wanted to place these line of trees because I just feel like it looks very modern. Um, I kind of hedged in the front with these beautiful hedges. I kept everything simple, a lot of white and green plants. It just looks super cute. If you do want to download this house, I do believe that I put it on the gallery. Yes, I did put it on the gallery. It's right here. So if you want to download it, just find me on the gallery. My username is Jet Set Simmer everywhere you go. I just titled it Modern Home. It does use a lot of packs, so I apologize for that. I really do think that it would be fun to do a base game modern build, so maybe I'll do that sometime in the future. But here it is if you want to download it. 
Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching this quick little speed build of this modern home. As always, if you have any other ideas on builds that I should do, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you do want to see more. And with that, folks, I'm going to go, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you guys. Thank you.